next on Abundant Life Today with Pastor Walter Hallam. It makes me a difference if the devil wins or not. It makes me a difference if anybody messes with my church or not. It makes me a difference if anybody messes with my family or not. It makes me a difference if the devil tries to destroy my business, my wealth, whatever it is, in Jesus' name. And the Bible says he rose up. What do you care enough about in life to risk obeying God uh, beyond your own self-interest? Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. Abundant Life School of Ministry is the place to prepare for your purpose. As a student, you'll be equipped, inspired, anointed, and released into your unique calling. Upon graduation, you will work alongside a local church vision, continue your education to be used of God in a secular occupation, or even head to the nations as a missionary. Awesome alumni are currently ministering in nations around the globe and in the United States. Whatever God's calling is in your life, you will become a man or woman that will make an impact on neighborhoods, cities, and nations with the gospel. If you are ready for practical, hard-hitting instruction that is highly anointed by God, then Awesome is the place for you. Come to Abundant Life School of Ministry and discover your destiny in God. Visit www.alcc.org for more information. I'm going to ask you to open your Bible today to the book of 2 Samuel chapter 21. I intend to finish this morning. I hope to finish this morning in a, in a very short follow-up on my message I've been speaking about. Destroying the giants, killing the giants that come against your life. How to be victorious over the giants. How many of you are glad you're not a grasshopper? but you're a giant in the spirit yourself. Praise the Lord. 
So in the Bible, we see that there were, and I'm not going to do a lot of recap. I'm just going to talk to you about it. I want to get right straight into this. Uh, the past three Sunday mornings, you can hear a teaching on these different giants. But in the scripture, there are several giants that get killed that are named. And there are several instances that God describes where people actually destroy a giant. Of course, the first one would have been David. That's the first one we have recorded who killed a giant. His name uh, was Goliath. We know that Joshua and uh, Caleb ran giants out of the promised land, but it doesn't necessarily say they killed them. Let's assume they might have, but let's just stay with the Bible and stick with the scripture for, for our absolute. We know David uh, killed a giant, which is very unique and very novel. No one in Israel would go out and fight Goliath because they did not believe that a mortal could kill a giant. Uh, they apparently had no history that they knew of because everyone was full of fear. Well, David was just a young 15 or so year old uh, teenage man, and he, he decides it's not a matter of me killing that giant. It's a matter of me fighting against what's fighting against Jehovah God. That's what he went out against. His agenda wasn't, hey, I'm going to be the first giant killer. His whole thing was, you come against me with a foul spirit, but I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts. He believed that there was more working with him than there were working with his adversary. Can I have a big hallelujah? And he went out, and you know that story, and, and he destroyed that giant, which is a powerful thing. Uh, and then there were four other giants that rose up uh, that in 2 Samuel chapter 21 here. And then, of course, in chapter 23, there is a, another giant. So there's six of them all together that we have uh, some description of them being killed. Uh, the, the sixth one uh, is a, uh, is, is an, uh, the Bible calls him an Egyptian giant, a warrior, and he comes against a young man who didn't have much notoriety in his life, but he wanted to do what was right, and he, of course he took that opportunity and he destroyed that giant, and that's a whole uh, another message also. So we're in 2 Samuel 21. We're looking at these last four. You'll notice in 2 Samuel chapter 21, it begins in verse 15. Moreover, the Philistines had yet war again with Israel, and David went down and his servants with him, and he fought against the Philadelphians. No, the Philistines. I just want to know if you are listening. That would be the, who would that be, the Philadelphia Giants? That would not, wouldn't work, would it? Yeah, the Phillies, that's right. And David waxed faint, one translation says, and David became weak. And Ishbibinob, come on, say it with me in Jesus' name. I will never forget. Ishbibinob. So Ishbibinob is a giant who suddenly shows up. When David killed Goliath, he was 15 years old. The, uh, the historians, the Jewish historians especially, say that David continued to kill giants every time they would come up as a, a leader, a captain, as a military man, he would kill giants. He would still do that. Uh, we have this one, uh, Goliath, of course, recorded, but David had an anointing. He was not exceptionally large or anything of that nature, uh, but he had an anointing from God to kill giants. Say this with me in Jesus' name. I'm anointed to kill giants against my life. And so he's now at this time, he's 60 years old. So 45 years before he had killed Goliath. For 45 years he's been leading, uh, he's been uh, uh, known as a great warrior uh, from that time on. And he did some mighty exploits and he raised up mighty men, the Bible says. And they did mighty exploits. Uh, and so we'll have to suffice it, get the other tape, if you want to hear more about that. And so now, after 45 years, a giant shows up again with a name. Uh, his name is Ishbibinob. And the, the name Ishbibinob, and I get this out of Strong's, W.E. Vines, and uh, uh, certainly out of Bullinger's uh, 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 Greek and, and uh, uh, Jewish writing. You can see it in Hebrew. You can see it in several different ways. Aramaic, you can see it. Uh, this particular name, Ishbibinab, means, it comes from two words. It means to do nothing, like to sit down and relax, to do nothing. And it also means to reap a harvest. 
Isn't it interesting that a giant shows up 45 years later and his name means to sit down and do nothing and expect a harvest? You want me to tell you how to stop the plan of God in your life? Just expect a harvest for doing nothing. It's a giant that shows up. There's no way that you will reap unless you sow. If you want friends, you have to sow friendship. If you want the love of God, you have to sow the love of God. If you want relationships like that, if you're believing to prosper, then you need to sow time and effort in equipping yourself and what you're trying to do. If you're believing God for more money, tithe and offer. Expect God to open the windows of heaven for you. But there is a cooperation with the spirit realm. Jesus said in Matthew, what you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and what you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. You have to cooperate with the heavenly realm. If you bind it and God has it bound up here, it will be bound down here. If you loose it, and God says it can be loosed up here, it's going to be loosed here. The fact that God just does it for you because he's God, if that's the case, he could have saved you just because he's God. There are some things that God does not do without your participation. Look at two people and say, I'm liking this already. Come on, tell them. And so David now is 60 years old. They tell him a giant has come. And when the giant shows up, uh, David says, all right, it's giant killing time. If there's a giant, I'm the giant killer. He's 60. He doesn't make any difference. It's in him. If giants show up, he's going to attack them. How many of you think we ought to be after the, the giant of sickness all the time? Yeah. We ought to be after the, uh, the, the giant of racism all the time. Yeah. We should be after the, the giant of false doctrine all the time. We should make a decision. Uh, in life, there are plenty of giants. The giant of division, the, the, the giant of divorce, uh, the giant that tries to destroy our kids. Look, don't sit back and do nothing and expect God to do all of that. You rise up in Jesus' name and do your part because the very giant itself is a strong uh, distraction from what you're actually gifted and called to do, and that's to overcome that thing. So we live in the world and situations are going to come up that are not pleasant or positive for you in life, to say the least. But God did not leave you defenseless. He has equipped you, put on the whole armor of God. It starts with your mind. Get the helmet of salvation. Come on, get yourself saved and get your mind saved to go along with your spirit. Get rid of the stinking thinking and get you some faith thinking. Come on, get you a power phrase in your mouth. Like our God can and our God will. Learn how to talk faith instead of, well, you know, what they say. I'm going to punch who they say. When I get to heaven, I'm going to look that dude up and just smack him right in the nose one time. Well, you know what they say. Easy come, easy go. Well, no, no, no. They don't say that around my house. No, I don't say that. You say that around me and I'll just either do one or two things, correct you or walk off. I'm not about to receive that. Well, you know what they say. You win a few and you lose it. No, I don't say that. I never say it. Never. Win a few and you lose it. I hadn't said that hard. I, if I can remember, I hadn't said it in 40 years. Now, when I was young and dumb and not full of the Word of God, I might have said that. But I refuse to say that today. Why in the world would I want to empower anything that's trying to keep me from doing what I'm supposed to do? If I am not sitting down and doing nothing, but I am participating with God's plan, then I'm not going to demotivate myself and completely desensitize myself to the unction of the Holy Ghost by expecting to lose sometime. You say, well, do you lose sometime? No, I don't lose. I just learn a lesson. No, I just keep learning how not to lose. I refuse to lose. Just keep learning lessons. Get better and better, stronger and stronger. How many of you glad the battle's not over till you win, huh? Come on. Think like a believer. Think like a Christian. Like a Bible Christian. Instead of, you know, some, you know, morphed form of that today. Stick with the Word of God and watch what God does in your life. Hallelujah. The enemy tries to, to mess with your life. Well, you just say, no, don't mess with me. Because if you do, there's going to be seven more better than me. 
God's raising this thing up. So the scripture says David waxed faint. He got tired. And when he got tired, Ishbibinob, the sit back and do nothing and still expect something good to happen, that giant showed up. You want to you kill a move of God? You want to kill a church? You want to kill a family? You want to kill a business? Just let the Ishbibinob giant get inside of you. Just let that get around you. I don't even run around with those kind of people. I love everybody, but that doesn't mean I run with everybody. I like people that are pressing toward the mark. I don't care if, they, if they're there yet or not. That means nothing. I want to know if they're in the process. Are they in the holy hunt? Are they moving forward? Are they learning to fill their mouth and their mind with faith? And in this world that we live in, there are plenty of, uh, there's plenty of carnality everywhere around us. But even though we are in a carnal world, we still have a spiritual lifestyle. I'd like to talk to you just for a minute about one of the most sensitive subjects that anyone can ever experience, and that's the loss of a loved one or a very strong tragedy when someone goes through that, how they hurt, how they're very pained on the inside, and how do they recover? Can they ever recover from the loss of a loved one? I've written a book entitled, The Big Why, and in this book, the Lord began to talk to me about the four reasons that something bad can happen to someone who is good. I'm very experienced in this particular understanding. My beautiful daughter, who was 18 years old, died prematurely years ago in an airplane accident. And when she went to heaven, the Holy Spirit visited me and began to talk to me about that powerful experience, about heaven itself. And then God began to talk to me about the four reasons that something bad like that can actually happen to such a good person. Now, you may know someone who's going through a very difficult time, or you might be personally going through a very, very tragic time. If you get a hold of this book, listen, it may save their life. It may save your life. It might help you overcome pain that's almost too difficult to verbalize. It'll even tell you how to talk sometimes in those unique matters. So go right to the website at walterhallam.com, Get your copy for yourself or a friend, and I'm excited to hear about your recovery. So Ishbibinom rose up the sun. He was one of the sons of the giant, the weight of whose spear weighed 300 shekels of brass in weight. He being girded with a new sword, he thought to have slain David. Let me just quickly give you that verse. I'm reading King James. Uh, but it says that he had a, a 300 shekels of brass. Goliath's, 45 years ago, David had fought Goliath, and his was 600 shekels of brass. Now they had, after 45 years, they had customized a weapon against David. They knew if they went to fight, these giants went out in a mercenary type of fight. If they went out to do that, that they were going to have to face David. So uh, how many of you know the devil ought to know if he comes to, to your house and tries to make any one of your kids sick, he's going to have to face you. He tries to steal your money in Jesus' name. You're going to obey God. You're going to rise up in faith. That thing has got to face you. Praise the Lord. I know other people are praying with you. Everybody's behind you and all of those things. But you've got faith on the inside of you. If it's no bigger than a little rock out of a brook, you've got what it takes to win and destroy whatever giant comes against you if you'll just sling it in faith. Come on, get it on the inside of you. Get it so deep on the inside of you, hell couldn't beat it out of you. Uh, he, with, with, a, uh, with, with a Mack truck, it could knock it out of you. The devil run over you in the road and left a greasy spot. Uh, I can tell you right now, that greasy spot would be shouting out, my God reigns. Somebody said the other day that a mosquito bit him. And, and a member of this church and said when the mosquito flew off, uh, it was singing, nothing but the blood of Jesus. <laughs> the, 
They thought they had customized a special weapon against him. A new sword. One translation says a new type of sword. Maybe one that David had never, in, in, in military combat, had never fought against in sword fighting, which is a, a, there's not a lot of room for error in that. And the Bible says he wounded David and thought he had killed him. And he's about to do to him what David had done 45 years ago to one of his ancestors, and he's about to knock his head off. David is wounded. He's hurt. Uh, he, he's, he's, he, he got weak, he got tired, he was 60 years old. Ishbibinab uh, thought he had him down with this new custom weapon. And the Bible says that Abishai, the son of Zariah, covered David. He ran out there, one of David's men, get the other tape on this, looked at that and said, oh my goodness, we've been watching David kill these giants all these years, and now one of them... Uh, has taken advantage of his, maybe his, what, uh, you know, lack of knowledge of the new weapon and has knocked him down and about to kill him, but no one else had ever killed a giant that we have recorded. But something went off because of a deep, endearing relationship inside of Abishai, not because, because he was not apathetic about the call and the gift and the relationship and the place that God had called him into, one of David's guys named Abishai rises up and says, wait a minute, it makes me a difference if David dies or not. It makes me a difference if the devil wins or not. It makes me a difference if anybody messes with my church or not. It makes me a difference if anybody messes with my family or not. It makes me a difference if the devil tries to destroy my business, my wealth, whatever it is in Jesus' name. And the Bible says he rose up. What do you care enough about in life to risk obeying God uh, beyond your own self-interest? The, uh, the Apostle Paul, not David, the Apostle Paul uh, came into uh, a city one time and the Bible says he was stirred in his spirit when he saw all of the uh, idols and the idolatry. He was stirred when he came into Athens. He was stirred. In his spirit, what, what, what giant thing uh, is in front of you in life that you see that may not even be affecting you, but you see it? I'm stirred when it comes to abortion. I'm stirred when it comes to the sin of homosexuality. We're not mad at anybody. We love every person, but there's a sin involved with that that's trying to normalize itself and the sin, a demon that gets civil rights. It's a demon. I'm stirred about it. I care. Look at two, two people and say, I think he really does. Come on, tell him. I think he really cares. How many of you think you ought to care about something other than your own belly? I don't like homelessness. I don't like poverty. I hate racism. That's why I'm in Lamarck, Texas. That's why you're here. One of the reasons. We love the kingdom of God. We love the ways of God. And we refuse to turn loose or let go of that. We're stirred about some things. It makes a difference when it looks like the devil's winning in an area. And Abishai decided, I'm going to risk it myself. Maybe he had watched David in, over the years as a warrior. I don't know what it was. But one thing's for sure, he had not been preconditioned to fight against another weapon so the old kind of weapon was not going to stop him. So a new weapon to him was the same as it would have been to Ishbibinab, a new warrior. And he rises up. And the Bible says that he covered David and he killed the giant. Now there are two giant killers. Now there are two giant killers in the army. How many of you are glad that if you got someone around you full of the Holy Spirit, if you ever get wounded spiritually speaking or you ever have a need in your life, somebody else can help you fight that good fight of faith. Come on, clap your hands to God if you got it. The scripture says he covered him. The word is secure. He secured him and he smote the Philistine, killed him. And the men of David swear to David saying, look, we got to protect you because the anointing is coming out of you. You are the light of Israel. And if that light gets put out, it's going to change the destiny of everything. So we want to make sure that that doesn't happen. So the Bible says they would not let him go out and lead a charge in battle uh, from that time on. But what happened is they became giant killers. It came to pass there was again a battle with the Philistines uh, in Gob. 
And, and um, uh, Sabika, the Hushanite, slew Saf. We saw that uh, last week and week before. He slew Saf, which was of the sons of the giant. The word Saf comes from two words put together, uh, two Hebrew words put together. One of them means a cistern or a bowl, and the other comes from the root word for blood. And it literally means a bowl of blood. And the Bible says the giant of blood problems. In the last days, we are dealing with that. Jesus said in Matthew 23 and Matthew 24 that in the last days, kingdom would rise against kingdom and nation would rise against nation. Uh, the Greek word there is the word E-T-H-N-O-S, ethnos. We get the word ethnic from it. And Jesus said geopolitical systems will rise up and ethnic groups will rise up in the last days. Today, almost every war that's going on on planet Earth is not over an ideology in political position. It's over an ethnic battle. There are over 30 hot wars going on today around the globe. Amazing that Jesus nearly 2,000 years ago said that in the last days that ethnicity would be an amazing battle, a giant, that it belonged to the church to overcome it. On the day of Pentecost, there was a multitude of people from different countries and different places there. Acts 13 says they were first called Christians in Antioch. It's the first named multiracial, multi ethnic, multinational church that gave a fivefold ministry position to people, not based upon their Jewish heritage, but based upon their relationship with Jesus Christ. It made no difference who they are, and there they were first called Christians. The, the church, the, they were called Christians. The first church named that did not respect people because they were just all white or just all black or just all male or just all Hispanic or just all Indian. And now in this church, not just all Arabic of some kind. We are so blessed to have people from all over the world, not just all African, not just all Galvestonians. Not just all uh, Harris County. No, but it's the gift and the calling of God that's on the... We know men after the Spirit, not after the flesh, the Bible says. Spiritually speaking, that's how you have to see it. Otherwise, there's a giant. You can either play along with the giant, pet the giant, do all of that with the giant, feed the giant. You can do whatever you want to do. You can even turn and block for the giant. Or you can do like a real Christian. You can rise up and stand against that giant in Jesus' name and make a decision that you're going to alter and change your life to agree with the battle plan of victory that God has for you. Thanks again for joining us on Abundant Life Today with Pastor Walter Hallam. 